integers. Typically, students hate working with integers, largely, again, because it's something you have to use often enough to get a feel for. And a part of the problem with integers is there's so many different ways to look at the question and still get to the right answer. But that also means there's so many ways to look at them and get to the wrong answer. So I'm going to try and zip through some of that. Odds are you need to practice, practice, practice. So if you need more practice with them, feel free to holler at your teacher and say, help, I need more questions. Integers are, are very key and there's something you're going to run into in your life all the time, even though you don't think that you are. Integers are just numbers. And I'm going to start by drawing a number line. And actually, let's not start at zero. Let's start at one. When you were little, somebody put some Cheerios on your high chair and you started learning how to count them. And when you learned how to count them, these are the numbers you used. And you learned how to go one, two, three, jump and count to 10 and so on. Then all of a sudden, one day, you were sitting eating your Cheerios on your high chair and they were all gone. And now you know what zero is. Zero is all gone. You have nothing left. Now, the reality is this number line that I have starting at zero doesn't start at zero. If you talk to my banker, my banker would say, no, 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 no. There is also this direction when we talk numbers. Now, this direction does not apply when we're talking Cheerios, obviously, but it does apply to a whole lot of other things in our world. And what happens is this is just a mirror of the numbers you already knew, except they're negative numbers. Now, I'm not doing a very good job because I'm drawing this freehand, but each of these steps is exactly the same size, right? The step from negative three to negative four is the same size as a step from two to three. And I don't know, probably I'm showing just how old I am, but if we could magic school bus in here, there's all sorts of decimals and fractions and all of that happening in between. But these are the nice, neat integer steps as we work our way along the number line. These, of course, are what we call whole numbers. Those are from zero going on and on and on. And these arrows mean that this goes on and on forever. This whole set of numbers and no decimals, no fractions, just the nice whole steps in either direction are what we call integers. And please notice in the word integers, there is only one R. They are not integers, it's integers. Only one R there, uh, the second last letter. So what are integers? Integers are nice whole number steps in either direction from zero. So zero is an integer, seven is an integer, negative 452 is an integer. What do they mean? Well, you know from the number line really what they mean. The challenge is how do we work with them? Let's start with what people are gonna tell you is the easiest. I'm gonna argue it's really not. And let's talk about adding. Now, when is it easy? If I say what's three plus four? You all know that seven and you would say, yeah, but we're supposed to be working with integers. Three and four are integers. They're on here, right? You already know how to do adding a positive to a positive because that's what you've been doing for a long, long time. So how come this now has to be written like this? Well, it doesn't have to. That's the reality. When we're talking about positive numbers, we don't have to put the pluses in front. We all know that's what it means. So adding a positive to a positive, do it the same way you've always done it. Now, what if I have a negative, like negative two, and I'm adding on negative seven? Here's where it's going to help if you have some understanding or something in your brain where you can think about what does negative two mean? Now I'm going to go to a new page to talk about this because I'm going to talk about it in, in a couple of different ways. One way that works for some people 
here's Susie's house, Susie's yard, and Susie has dug a hole. Um, let's get rid of Susie's yard for a minute. Susie has dug a hole. How deep is Susie's hole? Two feet deep. She has a hole two feet deep. And now what's she going to do? She's going to add on or she's going to go another seven feet deeper. So she's going to, here's where two feet was. She's going to go all the way down here. Another seven feet down. Where does that leave her? Well, you can see easy enough that, hey, that's nine feet deep, nine feet down, negative two plus negative seven is negative nine. Now, if that doesn't make sense or another way to look of it, look at it, you've probably heard about it as money. Your bank account was at zero, meaning the balance was at zero. You took two dollars out. Now, how do you take two dollars out if there's no money there? Well, there are ways to accidentally write a check or whatnot or owe somebody, which is going to leave your balance at negative two. So you took two out. Now, what if you somehow take another seven out? Where's that going to leave you? We're going to go down another seven. That's going to leave you at negative nine. Okay, and I'm guessing most of you can see that. Now, let's go this way. Here's that number line. And a number line, because it goes forever in both directions, I'm going to slide it. And I'm going to move zero way over here. So here's my one, two, three, and so on. And why am I doing that? Because I want to start at negative two. And I want to add on, so I'm here first, right? I'm at negative two. I'm, I want to add on negative seven. In other words, I want to add on seven steps further down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's where I'm landing. Well, where is that? Negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine. So you see, all of these are ways to help you visualize what's going on when you add two negatives. And in fact, when you add a negative to anything. Because what happens if I have 15 and I add on negative 4? How can we use our, our ideas here, our, our pictures, our references to do 15 plus negative 4? Excuse me, if you think about Susie's yard, she can't have a hole that is positive 15. She can't have a pile of dirt, though. Oh, that's a very bad house. Susie's house. And out in Susie's yard, she has a pile of dirt 15 feet tall. She's going to add on negative 4. What does that mean? She's going to add on a decrease of four. Somebody's coming along and taking four feet of dirt off the top of her, of her pile. Where does that leave her? At 11. On a number line, you're at 15. And you need to add on four steps down. One, two, three, four. We'll leave you at 11. Bank account, you have $15 in your bank. You take out four, that'll leave you with 11. Now what happens if it's the other way around? What if I start with a negative, like negative seven? Now I, do I need those brackets? Not at all. Sometimes you'll see them, sometimes you won't. What if I add on 42? My bank balance is at negative seven. I deposit $42. Susie's hole seven feet deep. She puts on 42 feet of dirt. Where's that going to leave her? 
with a hill 35 feet high. Now, all of that said, this might not make sense for you. It just, for it sometimes it doesn't, right? And you can find ways to do it and whatnot. It is totally okay to grab your calculator, but you have to know how to use it. So this is a really good spot to grab your calculator and make sure you can do this in it because this minus right here for some calculators is messy. If I open up my calculator and I want to go negative seven plus 42, I can hit this minus and it won't listen to me because that's a my, that's a math operation. It's going, but I haven't, don't have anything to, to do it with. You need to give me a number. I can go zero and my, nope, now it's trying to subtract. So no, be careful. Calculators, where's my clear? There it is. We'll have an ability to change a sign to negative somehow. Some of them, you're going to put seven and then there's this plus or minus sign. Now I see minus seven in my window. On some, there's a separate minus button, usually up over to the top left somewhere in brackets that you're going to push if you want to make the next thing negative. So to punch this in, I would go, I need negative seven, add 42. Now notice I don't have to say the 42 is positive because we all know if I don't put a sign on it, it's positive. Equals 35. Calculators are tools as long as we make sure we know how to use them and use them well. There's how to add integers. Now I'm going to stop here and I'm going to make another video on subtraction and another one on multiplication and so on.